share uh comment below on the space that way we can get more people in the room that would be awesome i see Alyssa. happy friday how you doing and my friend luco all right cool all right so how, how you doing prashant how's your day been so far it's been good uh i've been taking a few personal day off so yeah uh good to be back on twitter and back on spaces yeah and i saw you had an issue with your computer too so sorry to hear about that uh yeah it happens right like you know uh, it's 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 been a very good experience for me so far on web3 and when everything is going good you need a setback right to build back up so i think it's okay <laughs> Hopefully, mostly positives after that one. But uh, no, I appreciate you uh, being here today and um, and joining us as as our guest on on the space. So really appreciate that. Um, I do have also a live stream going on here with with Jenny and myself as well. Uh, I know you could enjoy it, but that's all good. Uh, I'd like like to capture that to you know there's something new we started for for the spaces. But um, all right, I see Cam also joined us as well, uh, and I appreciate if you guys could go and comment below and retweet the space so we can get more people in the room as well. And that's also um, how I know who to distribute the um, the PO apps to after the space as well. All right, and it looks like most of the people we have on are pretty familiar with our spaces. <laughs> um but uh and i you know maybe also for for prashant's sake or people maybe that are going to tune into this later um i'll start off with kind of a quick introduction of what the spaces are about then i'll turn it over to jenny uh to introduce our guest artist for today and then we'll kind of jump into you know kind of question interview style questions for you prashant and afterwards uh, anybody that's in the in the audience in the twitter space you, know, you can feel free to request come up would love to have you on the on the stage as well and um, all right, so with that said, I'll, I'll start to do like the introduction. So pretty much this is a you know, weekly Twitter space uh, that now is also a video podcast on YouTube as well, where we like to interview and highlight the amazing work of Web3 artists. Uh, we had seen that, you know, just there was other spaces out there that gave artists a very short period of time to talk about themselves and, you know, quickly have to like show their art and really wanted to have something where we could go deeper and get to know the artist behind the art much better. And we hope that with these spaces, um, artists can reach new collectors, um, existing collectors or followers of theirs can get to know them better, and that maybe we could inspire people that are listening who might have you know, a, a creative passion inside of them to start creating and sharing their own artwork as well. It's a very inclusive space. We welcome artists of all nationalities, backgrounds, artistic styles, whether they have you know, 50,000 followers or 50. Uh, we want to welcome everyone and celebrate how art and creativity uh, bring us all together. So with that said, I'm going to turn over to Jenny, who's going to introduce our guest for today. Thank you. Prashant is a talented illustrator and artist who creates art with serene, simple, and elegant line work to capture optimism and joy within the intimate moments of everyday life. Prashant currently has three collections which can be found on foundation and object. Giancarlo and I are excited to learn more about this talented emergent artist and warmly welcome him to today's space. Welcome Prashant. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so Prashant, maybe... oh, sorry, I, I... go ahead. No, I just wanted to thank you, uh, Giancarlo and Jenny, for having me in the space. Uh, I think this is the first time I'll be talking about my work in a space. So, you know, I'm kind of angsty. So do take care of me. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry, but you're good hands. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll definitely make you make you feel as comfortable as possible. You know, it's a, it's a safe space. And uh, yeah, no, and, and really cool that we're, we're getting to help, you know, be your, your first space where you get to talk about your work and, and yourself. So really, really happy to have you here. Um, so yeah, let, let's start off, Prashant, maybe take like five minutes and tell us a little bit more about yourself, you know, who you are, uh, a little bit about your story and how you eventually came into Web3. So the, to those who don't know me, hi, I'm Prashant. Uh, I'm from India, uh, from a place called Bangalore. So I was, I didn't have an art background before coming to NFT. Uh, it's just that I was writing a book. Uh, 
a story based on Indian culture. And I I needed inspiration for artwork for the book. And I came up call, across this artist called as Wapu. And I realized that he had a collection of NFTs. And I wanted to know more about that. And, you know, that's how I tumbled onto NFTs. And I think uh, I was a banker before that. Uh, you know, it's been one and a half years since I left my job. I've been on a sabbatical since then. And, um, you know, I've been putting all my time into NFTs. And it's been such a great experience. I've got to meet a lot of people who have influenced me in a lot of ways, uh, you know, in a lot of good ways. And, you know, that's what has been pushing me so far. Um, and, you know, it's been those people that have allowed me to do whatever I'm able to do now. So, yeah, that's a little bit of background about me. No, that's awesome. So you so you had a traditional background in banking, but you were also trying to write a story or something about, about India. Is that Did I get that correct? Yeah, like I'm an like uh, I'm a typical Indian. We do engineering, <laughs> then we get into banking. Uh, so yeah, like that was my original background. Uh, but then you know uh, there was a point in time where I I was um, you know I went to a dark phase like most of us uh, where I didn't want to be the position I was in. So I thought I I need a break, and I thought I'll explore a few more uh, options. And that's when I you know got into book writing. I used to write a lot of poetry. Before, uh, so I want to make an adaptation of in culture. Uh, we have a lot of myths in our uh, culture, right? So I wanted to use that uh, as a background. So I was looking for art, and you know, there's this one particular artist called as Waku, and his work is based on Indian mythology. And I really like that. And that's how I, you know, got introduced into NFTs. And, you know, I somehow tumbled into it. And I went down that rabbit hole. And, yeah. you know, it's been... Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. And and uh, and it's funny, now that you're mentioning the poetry, some of it, like, now, now makes sense a little bit of, uh, of, of how you kind of describe some of your artwork and all that. And, and by the way, so we do have... Uh, I always got to, you know, give them some, some flowers when I see them in the room. But we have... Uh, uh, one of our, our regular attendees, Nefemi, who is, uh, he's, a, he's a writer. He's published a, a couple of books and he has a group where, uh, and a course where he teaches people, um, you know, how, how to write basically and, and how to basically be able to publish your first book. So uh, definitely someone you probably want to check out. You know, he's there in the audience as well if you're interested in doing that. So i got to give my, my boy here uh, some flowers on that because he, he's a you know, fantastic writer and also a lot of good advice on uh, on writing but uh, no that that's really awesome and, and so cool like how you uh that you found this and you know you, and, and you kind of found another passion basically um through artwork and now through um, nfts and web3 and and so i was looking at a lot of you know some of your artwork like in preparation for the space and i gotta say it's a very unique um like artistic style that you have you know i, I what i find really amazing about it is that you're able to convey like a lot of emotion with the use of just very like simple lines, just a few colors and your subjects don't have any like facial details, right? It's just like the kind of like the outlines uh, and, and you know, mostly silhouettes and lines on the inside and just thought it was a very unique and interesting style and was kind of curious like how, and especially not having come from a traditional art background, how did you actually like come to develop your, your style of artwork? You know, and what do you, what do you think kind of influenced that? I think it's it's been part of a journey, right? Like when I started off uh, with NFTs, I started off with poetry, and then I started. Uh, I then I shifted to photography, and then I did a little bit of photo manipulation, and then uh, I started drawing on my mobile. Like my first foundation piece was something that I drew on my mobile, and then again, uh, just you know, uh, somehow it happened that the artist that I talked about, Wapu. Uh, I got in touch with him and, um, you know, he actually gifted me a drawing tablet and I spent around six, seven months, you know, trying a lot of different type of artworks and, you know, just practicing, getting to, you know, on my uh, craft. And that's how I ended up with the style that I have now. So it's it's been a lot of practice and uh, a lot of hours spent in front of computer, I guess. Oh, so cool. No, and I, and I, and I love it. And um, but the other thing I was kind of curious about too was, you know, what do you feel like the inspiration for some of your artwork comes from? 
आई थिंक इट्स प्योर इमोशन राइट लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ माई आर्ट वर्क लाइक आई मेक आर्ट वर्क टू एक्सप्रेस माई फीलिंग एंड फॉर मी लाइक वेन आई वेंट थ्रू अ डार्क फेज लाइक आई आई वॉज ऑलवेज अ ऑप्टिमिस्टिक गाय आई लाइक टू लुक एट द ब्राइट साइड ऑफ स्टफ and you know for me my art is an outlet uh, so i try to put out as much as you know positivity out there as much as i can and so I, like you told right like colors i i use few colors most of the time colors are what that what is what is that i use to express myself like if i'm feeling blue i use blue if i feel happy i use a brighter tone if i feel sad i use a darker tone so i think colors is my way of expressing myself Oh that's beautiful. Yeah, no I love that so much. Um I had a question which um has to do with your name. Recently I tweet asking friends to share the meaning of their names and we discovered that your name aligns very much with your style of art. Would you say that you yourself are a calm person? or do you think that you find calmness through creating your art or maybe both i i wouldn't i wouldn't know the answer to that you might have to ask my friends whether i am a calm person or not <laughs> but yeah definitely my artwork is you know you be calm and that's that's the type of artwork that i want to do you know something that brings joy to people who look like, look at it but yeah about me you'll have to ask my friends i think we have couple of them they might know me better than me We'll have to get them to come up on stage, <laughs> maybe to talk to that one. Then that's awesome. So, um, other question I had, right, was, um, and I'm, I'm trying, I'm sure here on our on our live stream later for for the um, the the video version of this, but um, maybe I, I can also actually one of the pictures I did pin up was also from this this collection, right? But so so you do have a a collection on foundation that's titled uh, Solitude Serenade. and um you know it's just a very lovely collection you know i think it it does a nice job of kind of like again also like conveying a lot of different emotions through both through color and like the expression of the subjects and i was curious if you could share with us like why you chose to create a collection specifically about moments of solitude uh i was a shut in for almost 2 years like when where- even now right like it takes a dedicated friend to get me out of my house like you know for them to call me like 10 times to get me out of my house so most of my time i spend in a in a room uh, you know just with you know doing stuff that i like to do so i think it it was inspired by that i just use that feeling along with few of the people that have inspired me so it's a bit of me and it's a bit of a person from the space that i've met who has you know impacted my life so every piece over there is inspired by someone else and uh, you know a part of me that so yeah it's a mix of both no it's beautiful yeah and i figure that there was probably a lot of it related to you also you know maybe spending a lot of time yourself in in solitude as well but yeah no it's a, it's a very lovely collection Yeah, you can. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Like I'll I'll tell you this right. Like one thing uh, that has inspired me a lot is you know the people around me. Um, and so when I was thinking about my first collection, like this was the first collection I did in my uh, unique style that I have right now. And this style, I I put it out. This collection, I actually minted it on Open Sea, and then I I. I took the guts to open a space, and all my friends came in, and they made me burn the pieces on Open Sea, and made me, you know, uh, put it out on Foundation. So I think that was the worst space that you can have as a drop party. But I'm really glad they had me do that, because uh, that gave me a lot of encouragement, and you know, I'm happy, you know, how it turned out. So you do need those people around you, uh, those who inspire you, those who say, you know, uh, the right things at the right time. So yeah. that's how this color uh, creation was like uh, you know made um the descriptions in your art are also a very beautiful expression of your creativity they read like poetry and you mentioned that earlier um they are all lovely and i was hoping maybe you could read one of your favorites to our viewers 
I am really bad at that. One of the reasons I, I don't go to spaces and shit for work is. Um, Do you, would you mind if I read one? That would be awesome. I love listening okay. to other people read out my poetry. Okay, give me one second while I bring it up. Which one are you gonna do, Jenny? That way, I can also um, like put up the, um, the the text on the screen. I think it is one from the Foundation Drop. I'm just gonna pull it up. Um, bear with me one second. My computer's a little slow. Forgive me, guys. Oh, wait, it was not the foundation drop. It was, yes, it is, Solitude Serenade. Okay, here we go. Um, it was Tranquility. Love this one. Um, okay. Do you have it up on the screen? Yeah, I'm getting there. Oh, no, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. And actually, I don't have a way to pin it up on the tweet, but I, yeah, I got to it on the screen, so go for it. Okay, perfect, okay. The sky outside in blues and pinks, a breathtaking sight that makes her think of beauty so pure and rare, a sight that fills her heart with pure delight. She dips her brush in hues divine, and with each stroke, she finds peace. Her soul at ease, her spirit free, she is finally finding tranquility. That was so beautiful, Jenny. Thank you for adding so much life to that. Uh, really loved your recitation. Oh, thank you. And thank you for creating that art with that much intention. I just was very moved by the descriptions and the art. So I really wanted others to, to hear it. That piece was actually inspired by an artist called Rishika. Like, uh, she is someone that I adore. And, you know, I had the opportunity of her reciting the poetry as well, uh, the same poetry for me. Like, I usually do that whenever I go to, you know, spaces hosted my friends. I, I ask them to recite it for me because I do such a bad job of, uh, about it. And she told me that, you know, the best comment that I got is when she told me that, you know, she really liked it, you know, uh, it just represented her so much and the cat in the uh, illustration, you know, reminded her of her kid. Uh, you know, it's, it's almost like how she uh, makes a drawing. So I, I think for me, when someone says that about my work, when I, you know, when I do that, it's the best comment, you know, more than anything else. So yeah, thank you for choosing that piece. That's one of my favorite pieces in the collection. That's awesome. And it's funny you mentioned the cat because my next question mm -hmm. is about the cat. Um, your collection, Moments, which is on object and foundation, features a couple sharing romantic, quiet moments in different settings. I notice that there is this one other character who always shows up, which is a black cat. Um, and there's also a cat in several of the pieces in Solitude Serenade. Why did you include the cat? Like, I was always a dog person, like, growing up, I had a lot of dogs. Uh, but then when I moved into the new place, when, when I started being a shut-in, my brother bought in a cat, right? And, uh, you know, he is the life of our family. Like, he's the one, he's the naughty one bringing everyone together. So, I, I think I used that. And, in a way, the cat is me. Like, in every piece, that's a small representation of me in itself. So... Uh, I, I think you can call that cat as me and maybe. It's interesting you mentioned that because I I actually was thinking that um, you were the character, potentially the character with the hat, you know, because your PFP also has the, um, the, the same kind of like style hat. And then there's this character with the hat in, especially in like all, a lot of these pieces you have on the, on the object collection and moments. So I thought, oh, okay, maybe that's the cat and the you know, love interest or something like that, you know, but it's so funny that you mentioned that like you were actually the cat instead. Yeah, actually I want the characters, uh, you know, when someone look at my work, I, I want them to be the characters in my piece and I want to be part of that. The cat is, you know, me looking at the movement and, you know, I want the of viewers to be characters in the art, art that I do.
That's so fun. It basically everybody is like co-creating with you and inserting themselves into that setting. Um, I noticed that setting wise, there's references to the city of Paris that come up in your art. Does Paris have any significance that it holds for you? Like Paris is one place that I always wanted to visit. I, I haven't got the opportunity yet, but I'm planning, you know, next year. So growing up, I always dreamed about traveling to Paris and it's just a place of so much culture. And, uh, you know, my whole collection is about things that I want to do or, you know, things, moments that I wish I could go back to. So I, I thought Paris would be some place I would, you know, really want to go to. So I, I, I use that in my illustration. Yeah, I love that. I feel like Paris is like a dream place for a lot of people. And so it works very well with uh, the dreaminess of the aesthetic and of the collection in general. Yeah, and you know what's funny? Uh, so personal story on this is that, um, so I, I, I love Paris when I went. I went back in, uh, was it 1998, actually, right? Coinciding with like when the, the World Cup was in, in France. And like, I loved it. I loved the city, like I explored it all um, with, with family. And, but my wife went as well separately and she had a very poor experience. Like she didn't like the people. And, you know, so she like left with a kind of like this desire to like never want to go back, you know? And then our daughter like really, really wants to go to Paris too. Like that's like a dream for her. So I've always been joking around. I'm like, like, I told my wife, like, oh, we should do it again. And, you know, like we could do it right this time and you can enjoy it. And she's still kind of like on the fence about it. So and I told my daughter, like, all right, I guess when you're older, it'll be like daddy, daughter, you know, a trip to Paris, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll do it together. But so, no, that's awesome. I, I love that. And uh, yeah, and I, and I just love that note, that concept of like, yeah, these are like a lot of the things that, you know, you aspire, dream about and, um, and, and putting some of that into your, into your artwork. So cool. Right. I think there's a saying, right? Mm -hmm. Pick your heroes, <laughs> you know, maybe your dream location mm -hmm. that can be disappointing. So I usually don't have any expectations in anything I do. Uh, I just hope I don't. Um, I Only the problem that I have with myself is I don't want to disappoint people. So that's one of the reasons I, I don't push myself too hard. Uh, because I feel, you know, some way I'll, I might disappoint people. Uh, so... Uh, you know, so I take it a little slow, you know, take my own with most of the stuff that I do so that I, I try the maximum best that I could do with everything I do and take take as much time as I can. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, I it's just an imagination, right? Like me going to Paris is something that I've dreamed about so much. And, you know, who knows when I go there, I might be disappointed in the place. But uh, the thing is, like, I have done it right. Like end of the day, you don't want to leave your, uh, you know, uh, dreams uh, dead. I guess like you want to achieve all that, even if it's a disappointment. You you have to, I guess. Yeah, I'm really bad with my words when I'm emotional. Sorry about that. No. Oh no, you're. Perfect. I was just thinking that that's a really wise way to see things because go into meeting someone or going to a new place um, and you go with it kind of like clean slate without any expectations, that's usually when you have the most fun. It's when you have like these, you know, like higher expectations that you can be let down. So I totally understand where you're coming from with that. Um, and I happen to love it. I went, um, we didn't do the hotel thing. We did like just a simple Airbnb kind of setup and more so like a living situation than like a, a tourist kind of thing and just walked around. We, we had a really nice time. Oh, glad to hear that. <laughs> and yeah, and I think, I think it, like you were saying, Jenny, I agreed with that a lot. Like I think with most things in life, right? Like, yeah, just going into it without, you know, expectations or whatever, and just seeing like letting it be what it can be, you know, and, and experiencing it that way can make all the difference. You know, I think, yeah, usually when, when you come in with expectations, yeah, it's just really setting yourself up for, you know, being frustrated or disappointed, you know, but if you kind of go with an open mind with anything you do. It's, you know, definitely, I feel like I find it's a much better experience for sure. 
So, and Prashant, uh, next question that I, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, now, now that you've been in the in the Web3 space for some time, um, what do you love most about, you know, now being an artist in, um, in Web3? Uh, I don't know. Like, if you're talking about just being a genuine artist, it doesn't matter whether you are in Web3 mm -hmm. or, you know, in your life. But uh, if, if you want to succeed in Web3, one thing I realize is, how you market yourself, right? Like that, that's one thing like I've seen across the board, like, you know, people who are able to market their work uh, better are able to succeed much more. Uh, so if, if we are an artist who wants to succeed in the space, like learn to market yourself a little bit. And, uh, and I forgot this one thing, like the best way of marketing is, you know, putting out the best work that you can do that there's no way about it. Like if your work is truly good, you know, people will find it whichever way, but yeah, if you want to get that upper hand, then, you know, a little bit of marketing goes a long way. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And, it, and it's a big factor. And I think it's, that's one thing that can be kind of tough, I think for people in this space, because they might be like the most amazing artist, you know, but not really know a lot about like branding and marketing and you know or maybe not feel comfortable going on a space or sharing you know so i know that part can be um really challenging you know as well but i do find that sometimes yeah when the work is is very good and somebody you know you just have what at least one person you know <laughs> kind of catch eye of that um it could definitely be life-changing right and they can you know share it and 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 you know kind of um allow that person really to get a lot of exposure and, and growth in this space so uh, that's awesome so jenny you want to go to your uh, next question yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you touched on one artist already and possibly some folks that influenced the poetry part of your art. But I was curious, what artists maybe inside or outside of Web3 are you a fan of? I didn't get the last part, Jenny. Could you repeat the question again? Yeah, sure. What artist inside or outside or maybe both sometimes uh, of Web3 are you a fan of? Oh, uh, a lot of artists actually. Uh, there's one right now in the panel. Uh, if if you have a look down, you have Karan, uh, Karan out there. Like he is one of my absolute favorite. Uh, he just this chaotic artwork, which has you know, it's it's so good on so many different levels. So uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting him in real life. I've told him this like hundred thousand times. So. Yeah, he's definitely one of my favorite. There are too many, actually. Uh, there's this another artist called uh, Pangu, whose work I really love. Uh, he makes his beautiful sceneries. Um, and, you know, I've been really inspired by his work also. And then, yeah, there are quite a few. You know, I can take a whole day, uh, you know, people's name. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Always on the lookout for more artists. So I love asking that question. Um, and I just gave uh, Karen uh, a follow. Yeah, same here. And I'm just looking at some of the work right now. And it's, oh man, it's so cool. <laughs> so thank you for that. I'll tell you, he's one of the most established artists from India. Like he's so celebrated, right? He was on Times. He was on so many different things. So I, I, I am like, I have a celebrity crush on him almost. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a good friend too. But yeah, definitely one of my favorite artists out there. That's awesome. And uh, by the way, so other folks that are in the audience, um, if you guys want to come up and request to speak, feel free to, to do that. So we'd love to have you um, up here. Let us know how you're doing. If you have a question for Prashant, I uh, would love to hear it. So please feel free to request if you're, if you're there, you want to come up and join us. And um, I think one of the other things I wanted to ask you, Prashant, as well, is so um, outside of art, right, in Web3, like what other things are you passionate about? I, I used to play cricket. Like when I was growing up, that's one thing I was really interested in. Um, I, I I used to represent my district. Like it was huge back then. But, uh, yeah, I had some few health issues, so I had to back out of it. So cricket has always been my passion. Uh, I think everything, everything else, like it all started going downhill when I lost that passion. I think it's very really important to have a passion in life uh, and never lose it. So yeah, right now art is my passion. So I, I don't want to lose this passion that I have right now. 
Very true. So important to have something you're you're passionate about and and um, and ideally being able to do that, right? And and um, I know it can be hard, like if if because of some reason or another you're not able to to pursue or do that passion. But glad that you found art and and you're able to do that now. So that's that's awesome. And I see we got Nifemi uh, up on the stage. Hey Nifemi, how are you doing today? Hey, hey, uh, Uncle, how you doing? I'm doing, doing well, well on my end. Good, good. Happy, happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think there might be a delay on my end. Um, I just wanted to come up as usual, just to say hello. Um, you know, what you and Jenny are doing, I say this every time I get on stage is, you know, creating a space for, you know, people like myself, people like Prashant to t talk about their venturing into Web3. So, you know, more flowers to you and everything you're doing for sure. Um, but yeah, well, I, um, I wanted to ask Prashant a question. Uh, Prashant, thanks for sharing your story. You know, I've, I've seen your work. I really like the illustration. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a engineer myself I, I started off with you know my, my background is chemical engineering and you know I had that urge myself to try to do something else beyond just engineering and that's how I started making music I started writing and that's what led to my venture into web3 um, for you um, I think you said you started off as a banker and some engineering can you tell me more about that transition and what it felt like? when you actually got into banking, I can imagine if India is anything like Nigeria, where we have all these industries that our parents kind of want to put us into, like engineering, go be a banker or go be a lawyer or whatever it is. Um, can you tell me more about maybe the pressure of, you know, doing a career that, you know, society quote unquote respects and how you then made that transition into, let me go explore my creative side. Uh, that's a funny story. Like, you know, uh, it was a compromise between me and my family. Uh, so we have this entrance exam to get uh, to getting into engineering. Uh, and I actually wanted to do commerce. Um, so when I got my entrance exam ranking, I was getting into one of the best colleges uh, in the country. So they didn't want me losing out on that spot because, you know, lakhs of people try to get into that college. Um, so it was a, I, I took out um, a course called as Industrial Engineering and Management, which had commerce in it. So it was a compromise between me and my family. And then, you know, as always, I wanted to get into a government job. Um, and I, I spent almost a year preparing for that. I, I went to a different state to just to prepare for that exam. Uh, but in between, something happened and, you know, I landed up getting a job in bank, which which in itself is one of the, you know, again, one of the most competitive exams out there because 10 lakh people write uh, the exam and you know 2000 people get in so uh, just happened by luck um, but my passion was never there uh, so four, four years down the lane I, I you know when everything um, everything happened I, I felt it was you know this is not what I wanted to do uh, I need to take some time out for myself and you know explore, explore what else I can do so you know just happened that one day I decided you know I, I, I need something else in my life. And, you know, then again, I went down the rabbit hole and here I am two years later. Uh, like one thing I have to say, right, like my family is one of the most supportive family I've seen. Um, you know, I am not on the on the right side of the age. You know, I'm pushing 30. So it, it's not easy for any family, especially in India. Um, you know, if you consider... Uh, your son, you know, who is pushing 30 to not have a job and stay at home, you know, doing art. It's not a lucrative career, uh, but they have been so supportive of, uh, of me, you know, all throughout whatever I do, whatever I take. And you need those, right? Like when your family is your biggest supporter, that's, that's what matters. And, you know, they have been nothing short of that. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think, you know, the luckiest, the, mo the thing that I'm most proud of is having such a, a loudling loving and supportive family like you know there are things that my mom does for me my dad does for me that you know uh, i wonder sometimes 
you know is there anyone more supportive um, you know who would, who do that for their children so yeah my family that's you know is my strong i think strength uh that is amazing thank thanks for sharing that and it's it's always good to have supportive people around that can um help you with with, with your vision um the, just a second question before I hop off the stage. Um, I think in general, I haven't been to India before, but I have a lot of um, Indian friends. And, you know, the thing that is unique about India is just the diversity of the difference. I think there's a collective culture, but the diversity of the people, the different colors, the different spices. Um, how does that inform the way you create um, your arts um, in terms of, your heritage. Um, obviously, you're doing some digital arts, but how does your heritage inform the type of um, art that you make? I think uh, one thing I'm really proud of is like, just in my family, right, there are so many different types of cultures. Like, India is a vast country. Like, in my family, we have people from like four states. Uh, my mom is from a different state. Uh, you know, they speak a totally different language. <laughs> my father is from a different state. They speak a totally different uh, language. My aunt, she speaks a totally different language. So, you know, having grown up in this, in this family environment, you know, one thing is like I'm very inclusive. Like any culture that I go to, I can adapt easily. Uh, you know, I have stayed in places where I didn't know the language, uh, but I was able to adapt. And the same thing with my art as well. Uh, I try to, you know, whenever I see something that I love, I try to adapt it in my work. So I think that's how it has helped me. Uh, Hello, did I rug? Yeah, I was wondering if I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I think you're there. Okay, we're still I here. think you're there. Okay. <laughs> I was, I'm like, oh, no, because sometimes uh, I lose yeah. my audio, but no. <laughs> Man, I, I find that so fascinating that, like, in India, like, just the, the amount of language that's there. And, and I, because I've also had a lot of, um, a lot of friends in India, a lot of my friends from college, people I've worked with. And the fact that, like, yeah, like, people, I met people that were, like, from the same, you know, city. And then, like, and kind of like you were saying, like, you have family members that speak different languages. And I'm like, how do people even communicate? Like, it's it's crazy, you know. But uh, but it's 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 so cool that there's that much, like, diversity and so much culture um, in the country. You know, I think it's, um, it's such a beautiful thing. And it really does teach you, probably from a young age, to have to, like, be able to adapt and, you know, even learn how to communicate in other ways, you know, to, to be able to get your, your points across. And um, I loved also your answer to the Femi's first question. I think that's so awesome that you have such a supportive family, right? That, and especially coming from an, an Indian family, because I know again, from a lot of friends that I have, um, there's a lot of pressure usually to, to want to do those type of, you know, jobs like engineer, lawyer. So I think it's, it's amazing that, um, that they actually supported you and, in, in, um, in pursuing this passion of art. So, man, that's, that's amazing. It's so awesome. And if Emmy, thank you so much yep. for, uh, yeah, that, for joining. That, that's it for, me. for sure. For sure. I'm going to step off now. No, no. Thank Have you. Have a so good much. Friday. Thank you, you Emmy. Friday. All right, I see we got our, our friend here, Luco. How are you doing today? Yo, yo, what's good, fam? What's good? How are you? How are you? Hey, hermanito, ¿cómo estás? Hola, hola, familia, hola. Hola, hola. Aquí muy bien. <laughs> ¿Cómo vas? Fine, bro, fine. I was, uh, my, my headphones got fucked up and I was getting rough, but yes, I am here. I am here. <laughs> Well, happy, well, happy to have you. Yeah, I was wondering because it, it looked like you had to keep uh, bringing you back up, but I'm glad you're here now, brother. And uh, yeah, do you have a, a question for our guest? Uh, something else you want to share? Well, yes, of course. Well, first of all, I wanted to give you the flowers to Jenny and you because, well, I'm so happy to hear um, from more artists to know more than to know more of their stories of their things and like thinking about that we can meet um people uh, in this case of Prasna from India 
for me is like super mind blowing. So thank you so much for giving this space, um, for giving this amazing like interview. I was really, really, really happy to hear from him. Um, so yes, um, thank you, thank you for that. But yes, I actually have a question. I I have the question of the cat, but Jenny do it <laughs> at the beginning of the. But it's so nice to to hear that. But my question is, well, um, for the people that know, I am a color addict, <laughs> if I can, let's say it like that. And actually, I wanted to say you, Prashna, um, how do you um, select your colors in your artworks? I, I looked at you, use like super, super hard colors and, and simplify the colors. You use like a simple color palette, but it's so powerful. It's so powerful to your creations. And it seems like, give like another interpretation well to me that i am a color maxi to me that give another interpretation to see your works and to see the composition the characters all the things that you've done but how do you do you select like you have a favorite color or you have a favorite color palette how do you use like this um work creation that's like my question um so you know most of my people most of my friends ask me like uh why did you get into line art uh, that's a mis a misconception because uh what i go for is not the line art it's the colors that i put in like if i take one day to make the line arts i take five days to put in the colors like it's a lot of trial and error uh, for me un until and unless the color speaks to me i won't go with the color so i i i use a lot of you know, on a single piece, I might try out like 15 types of colors just to see if it is speaking to me the emotion that I want from the, uh, uh, you know, illustration. So it's it's basically trial and error. <laughs> I don't want to admit it, but it's trial and error, man. Uh, awesome, bro. Awesome. Thank you for that response. And actually, I wanted to ask you, um, I don't know if I miss it in the space or because I was a little bit rough, but why do you didn't put faces to the characters? Um, why the characters are like known faces? It's super, super interesting because, well, I feel and I, it made me feel um, that um, it's we are all humans. We are all humans and we don't have like um, difference and all these things. Yes, of course, we are um, different nationalities. Um, we, um, some, someone has like green eyes, someone's like brown eyes, but in your work, it doesn't um, matter this. And it's, I wanted to ask you, why did you um, do characters with known face? Super, super beautiful, man. Yeah, uh, it's something I think Jenny had asked before, right? Like, um, I don't know if it was uh, Giancarlo or Jenny, but uh, you know, for me, it's the emotions that I'm trying to convey in my work, and I want the audience to be part of that emotion, right? So I want them to be the characters themselves. So that's the reason I don't put faces on any of my work. Love it, man. Love it. Well, thanks so much. I I'm super glad to know more about you. Um, and well, let's keep go rocking. Thank you, fam, to the space. Thank you, Luco, so much for coming. I appreciate you, brother. I hope you have a great Friday and, uh, and a great weekend. And um, yeah, no, I, I love I love that at one point you kind of that, that word, right? That like in, in a way, like not putting the um, the faces really makes them you know kind of universal, right? And 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 it allows for like people to be able to like you know insert themselves into the uh, into the artwork, right? And become the the subject, like Prashant was mentioning. So that's that's so beautiful. And uh, a very interesting, Prashant, I, that is eye opening that like you mentioned that it takes you like that long to like come up with the, the colors and that you like experiment a lot. And I can actually kind of relate to that, too, because sometimes when I create my art, I um, I'll test things out and it, I'm just like not feeling it. And then I'll change it and I'll play with like different gradients. And eventually, like at some point, it just feels right. And I'm like this. Yes. And then that I go with it, you know, but so I could relate really to sometimes having to really think a lot about, you know, color and, and, uh, and what really conveys the right mood and feeling in your artwork. So, but so that's very interesting to hear that, like you spend that much more time doing the, the colors versus the line work in your pieces. 
Yeah, that's one thing I'm really particular about, right? Um, you know, uh, some of my best line uh, line art works haven't been you know shown to people because i am still not confident with the colors you know i still don't feel like the colors uh, express the emotions that i want to speak out uh, so you know it's just a work in progress till now like you know even my earliest pieces till the color speaks to me i don't have the courage to put it out uh, so yeah colors means a lot to me a lot more than the line art that i do wow i'd love to see one time if you're if you'd be open to it like a, a process video almost to see um, the creation and how the maybe colors evolve and then when it finally you know finally land on the ones you're looking for that'd be that'd be kind of cool to see if you'd be open to that definitely <laughs> That's something i'm planning to do once i have the new laptop set up uh, i'm planning to you know uh, uh, make a live study video of one of my works you know how i go about the colors and um, how i arrive at the last piece so yeah i'm looking forward to that too uh, yeah i'm um, you know happy that uh, one thing i'm really happy about is you know uh, when i started out in this space i knew nothing about you know what's happening in the space what what i should do but right now i have a direction um, you know i have a goal in mind i, I know where i want to be so uh, you know i'm really glad that i had it uh, you know for a huge part of my life i never had that so yeah this space gave me that and you know i'm just happy about that love it man that's awesome um and so uh maybe another i, I don't see another speaker coming up yet so if anybody else does want to request feel free to come up oh luca you have uh, your hand up go ahead no, yes, I only wanted to say that um, I just collect this piece, um, the peanut that put Giancarlo. Oh, awesome. Um, because I, yes, bro, I, I really love it. I really love it. Thanks for sharing. Um, and actually, I wanted to share with you why. Why did I feel so connected with this piece? Two years ago, um, I lose um, my cat. My mm -hmm. cat's um, name was Paula, and she was a black cat. So to see this artwork remind me so much to her. And well, it's like me with this. Um, I I am this this character with my girlfriend, with my girlfriend, my actual girlfriend. With we are with the hands, and we are seeing Paula. So thank you oh. so much, man, for that. I really connect so much, and well, so happy to have you uh, in my collection, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Luco. Uh, you know that that's the best kind of comments that I can get. Um, I remember, uh, I think it was sarcasm. You know, when I put out my first piece on uh, object, he told me it reminded him uh, about himself. So I think I, I I remember all these comments. You know, it's something I look back to and enjoy cherishing. So thank you so much, Luco, for uh, telling uh, that little story. Uh, I really appreciate you, and thank you, Jenny, also for collecting. Uh, you know, I whenever I usually have a sale, I put out this small tweet, a personalized tweet, you know, saying thank you. But recently, because of my conditions, I haven't been able to do that. But I'm looking forward to, you know, doing it once my laptop is set up. So thank, thanks to both of you guys. Oh, you're very welcome. And yeah, I, I saw that and it res I resonated with it too. Um, and I did something very similar. Like I kind of inserted myself, like that was me looking out into the stars. I'm always looking up at the sky so that particular piece and i was going through it i was like yeah that that I, that i resonate with so um like luco you know i i insisted myself into the art and felt like i had to have it in my collection so you definitely tapped into something and uh i think it's going to continue uh building your success because of the 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 vision that you have for the art Thank you so much, uh, but uh, you know, uh, I, I'll tell you again. Like you know, I'm I'm someone who is lost. Uh, most of the times, I I need my friends to guide me, right? Um, you know, my first collection. You know, when I put it out on, on ETH, it was one of my friends that I met in this space who encouraged me to put it on ETH because I I never thought you know I could sell something on ETH. I was always on Polygon because it was a free network, and I thought it was all I was worth. But then someone believed in me, pushed me forward to, you know, putting my art on Ethereum. And then the same person, you know, pushed me forward to put it on foundation. And, you know, 
I am so happy that you know I have found so many beautiful person people in this space uh, who believe in me and they are so talented as well right you know the people that I talked about before these guys are so so talented they have achieved so much when they believe in my work you know it's it means a lot more to me than you know I can ever express in words uh, and you know my collectors too uh, you know when they see these words when you tell this words i'm really emotional uh, you know i'm i'm not good with words when i'm emotional uh, but you know it really means a lot to me um, and i remember this stuff right like one thing i go back to is whenever i'm feeling bad i go back and remember stuff that people have told to me you know i like really love to look at all the bright sides you know what i have achieved and i i don't like to look at whatever i have lost uh so you know when you guys say this it means a lot to me and you know it's just it's not just empty words you know we're like just saying that thank you thank you uh, it really means a lot thank you so much guys I had to get myself unmuted but no that's that's beautiful prashant and 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 I agree with Jenny I think I mean you I think you'll have a lot of success ahead of you and you know you have very beautiful artwork and um and I'm you know I definitely going to will be looking to probably collect some of your pieces as well and I think it was even your friends that actually were the ones that said like hey you got to bring Prashant on on uh, on uh on your space he's got great artwork and you know we took a look at it. I was like yeah let's let's do it so I'm really really glad that um that you came on here and and um just very happy for what you've been able to already accomplish and and the fact that you have this this passion so that's that's so awesome um you know one thing other thing i we usually like to to ask guests and this is also because i'm a i'm a huge fan of um of movies <laughs> so um i like to kind of ask this just to see what you know what people answer and the the range of different answers we, t we tend to get in the spaces but um so what would you consider to be your um top three favorite movies of all time that's a really tough question because i i watch movies in like 15 different languages oh wow so it's difficult for me to uh, shortlist it like as in three uh, but uh, i'll go with personal connection uh, like first movie i watched with my parents were titanic for god sake so i'll go with titanic as one it's a great one <laughs> okay one uh, yeah, uh, Carlo, you were saying something. Oh no, no, yeah, I was saying yeah. No, it's it's a great movie. I've probably seen it like fifty times already, actually, to be honest. <laughs> That's a good one. So, the second one was one movie that I really liked as a kid. Uh, Nyan Mayavi. It's it's a Malayalam South Indian uh, movie that was the first uh, 3D film made in South India. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty big back then. Uh, and the third movie, uh, which will I go for? Wait, say, say uh, oh. I think Inception. Oh, which angle will you go for? Okay. I'll, I'll go for Inception because oh, yeah. uh, I think that that just, you know, uh, the way he tells story is just on a different level. So you you have to have it as one of your top movies out there. Yeah, that's one of my, it's in my, for me, it's hard to pick like a top three, but that like Inception is definitely like in my like top three, five bet favorite movies for sure. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the director. So yeah, I I, I, I love that one. <laughs> so good. Jenny, were you trying to say something too? I think- uh, oh. oh no, I'm over, cause I'm, uh, I'm muted over here, ah. but I was just like agreeing. I was like, yes, Inception, love it. Such a good movie. Oh, it's amazing. So, so good. Um, all right, the other thing I wanted to ask you Prashant as well was, um, do you have any, like maybe you could tell us a little bit more about any upcoming projects or goals you have for the art career and maybe what we can expect to see from you in the future. I am part of a couple of uh, projects right now, um, but uh, most of them are in like, um, you know, uh, we are still creating the artwork. Um, so, you know, uh, we do, we did have a little bit of setback because, you know, I lost most of the, most of my work when I, you know, my, when my laptop died. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to, you know, fulfilling my commitments when I get a new laptop uh, set up. Uh, so, yeah, a couple of projects down the line. And then as an artist, you know, recently uh, I started going out, uh, going out to exhibitions, right? 
uh, and it's it's been such a totally different uh, experience you know i'm so used to uh, going to virtual gal- virtual galleries looking at art on my mobile uh, looking at art in real life uh, has been a totally different eye opening experience so uh, you know maybe one day have an exhibition of my own in irl uh, uh, that's that's one thing i have in my mind uh, and i would like to publish a book as well um so i i want to publish two books actually one with my artwork and one uh, you know the story i was talking to you about before. so yeah right now uh, i i i did have the outline uh, art outline for uh, for the illustration book but again i lost it uh, but yet yeah, uh, it's okay i'll i'll make it up again so yeah that's one thing i'm looking forward to Oh, that's awesome. And great goals. And yeah, love to see, um, yeah, I'd be curious to see how that, that the illustration book, that sounds amazing. And like I mentioned earlier, yeah, definitely. If you want some advice on publishing and all that, definitely, uh, hit up our friend, Nefemi here, who's also, uh, one of the speakers because he's got a lot of good, good information on that. Definitely. Definitely. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm in, still in such an early stage, right? So, It's really awkward for me to put up uh, uh, come to a certain uh, point, so that's that's the reason I've been holding it closer to my heart. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing it as early as possible, and then you know putting it out there for everyone. Awesome. All right, and I'll do one last call in case anybody else didn't want to come up to to speak. Uh, just to, you know, let us know how you're doing or ask a question. Also. Uh, don't forget to put a comment down uh, below in the on the space. Um, hopefully, you guys did already or retweeted it so that I know um, you know who to send the uh, the PO app to afterwards. Um, and again, you know, thanks to everybody that that was here today listening in. You know, appreciate you guys, especially some of you that have you know come regularly on the spaces and those that came up to to speak as well. Uh, before closing up, uh, I have like few finishing thoughts. Like first mm-hmm. of all, I would like to thank. descriptive in the listener panel he's he's been one of my early supporters right like he's been one of my collectors uh, like every time i'm going through anything new when i'm trying anything new he is the first person to give me advice on that and you know, it's just awesome having him as my collector and having him as my friend you know you don't get that actually right like uh, when you have a collector who is you know so open to sharing his thoughts and supporting you it just makes so much difference so he's been such a kind of friend to me so yeah thank you so much discrepy for all the support and uh, jencarlo and jennifer uh, before coming to the space uh, i was really nervous uh, you know i stopped doing spaces like 6 months back uh, i used to host and go host a lot of spaces back then back in the days when you know twitter spaces was huge uh, but somewhere down the line i lost the confidence um, you know I, I regressed a little bit. Uh, I stopped talking about my artwork, um, and even if I go to space, it's just me chilling out with my friends, right? So thank you so much for having me in here. You know, you guys have been so sweet, and you have taken so much care about me. So thank you so much, guys. Um, really means a lot to me. Uh, the effort and you know the kindness you have. No oh, man, it's our it's our pleasure. You know, it's it's been really nice uh, getting to know you better, talking to you, and. I'm so glad this in some way is maybe helping to build that that confidence again to to get up on a space and speak and and glad to hear this was like the first one that you were like kind of like being interviewed and showcasing your artwork and like I said before I'm a you know I'm a big fan I love the the work you do it's it's so unique it's got such you know just a beautiful style and and the poetry that goes along with it is also just um is is very beautiful so I hope you continue to create more and more art write more poetry and that you are able to hopefully also publish those books that you're dreaming about as well and we'll be manifesting that for you my friend and uh you know thank you so much again for being uh, a guest of ours today as well again thank you so much uh, jankalo and jennifer thank you so much uh, you know it just made my day um uh, again like yeah it's just so sweet of you guys you know to take time out it, it's not an easy thing uh, you know when i used to host uh, being a host and you know um, showcasing someone else work is not an easy thing uh, you guys doing it week in and week out is just amazing uh, congratulations to you guys for showcasing so many different talented artists uh, from so many different backgrounds and uh, you know uh, kudos to you uh, looking forward to more of your spaces and learning about um, 
you know more uh, artists and their artworks thank you my friend yeah it's our pleasure no, we, we we love doing it and love being able to you know showcase uh, a lot of the, the amazing people that are in this space. I mean, there's so many people creating so many great artworks and with very, you know, fascinating stories to learn about. So it's, it's wonderful to, to be able to do this. And, um, and yeah, I mean, this, this is a new, a new space too, where we're now art, there's a lot more art being you know created and discovered. So, so it's an amazing thing and I uh, hope to be able to see you in uh, some of the future spaces as well. So appreciate you, man. And uh, thanks to everybody that was here today. Thank you, Jenny, as well for co-hosting as usual. And I hope everybody has a great Friday and a wonderful weekend. Bye, everyone.